thank, thank you, Amanda, and uh, thank you, NDC Partnership, for this uh, invitation and opportunity to briefly share our asset owner perspectives on uh, mobilizing institutional capital for bankable African uh, NDCs. Uh, at Africa Investor, representing large pools of institutional uh, pension and sovereign wealth fund capital from both within and outside the continent. The key things we look for is the ability to mobilize capital at scale and the ability to deploy that capital at speed for bankable green uh, and resilient uh, infrastructure assets. Uh, so to achieve this, our country level experience is primarily with and through like-minded domestic uh, sovereign wealth fund uh, and, and pension funds essentially as our origination and co-investment partners. And recognizing that you know, the continent needs to mobilize approximately $3 trillion of investment for our NDCs, as we all know, by 2030, uh, while the world has only mobilized 2.8 trillion in the last 20 years from the year 2000 to uh, the year 2020. This means that the continent needs to mobilize more in the next eight years, and we recognize that, than the world has mobilized in the last 20 years. Uh, so there is you know, a real need and there is absolutely no question that we need to instinctively and rigorously ensure all uh, NDC projects seeking private investment meet the highest standards of bankability and de-risking to be successful in today's highly complex and competitive race uh, for this uh, long-term capital. We therefore need to collaborate more fully, and we believe as, as private owners of capital and public owners of NDC projects to co-create and implement future fit uh, financeable business models and platforms to make mobilizing private capital at scale for African NDCs the expectation, not the exception. The question for our pools of capital is what are the best routes to market that overcome concerns about the absence of green equity platforms at scale, um, whether there is a really a, a pan-African investable legal and regulatory framework, uh, and of course, some of the concerns around the need for greater de-risking collaborations with multilateral uh, development uh, banks. From the domestic asset owner side, our constituency, we have sort of three major initiatives as the African asset owner community to address these questions, uh, which have the overarching goal to de-risk and deliver greater public private finance mandate alignment and more catalytic investment pathways that fast track and scale private capital's participation in the green transition. And, and we believe this should be implemented through institutional investor public partnerships, such as the African Green uh, Infrastructure Investment Bank. So our first initiative, as I just mentioned, um, is a, a, our sort of domestic institutional investor platform solution um, called the African Green Infrastructure Investment Bank, uh, which is an African Union convened and supported African institutional investor led a global finance initiative to catalyze private capital for Africa's green transition uh, in the run up and beyond COP27. The uh, AFGIB is the acronym for the platform, uh, suggests, uh, recognizes that uh, the African green finance market is suboptimal, fragmented, and lacks uh, platforms to mobilize institutional capital at scale. So the African Green Infrastructure Investment Bank will be an investor in a manager of African green infrastructure assets and will work to mobilize other private capital, crowding in additional finance, not displacing other investors. And we will primarily invest across six key sectors um, uh, in the first instance, wind, solar, waste recycling and biomass, uh, energy production, agriculture, water and forestry, energy efficiency, grids, electrification of cooking um, and transport and green supply chains and digital infrastructure uh, uh, assets. Uh, as the largest consortium of African and global institutional investors, we are committed to being innovative by building and strengthening the African green infrastructure investment market, not simply serving it. We want to work with all of you as the NDC project developers uh, to really unlock all of the potential um, and do that in a structured way that optimizes the prospects of you being able to secure long-term private uh, capital uh, for those particular projects. The second initiative um, uh, really highlights uh, and, and builds on some of the key messages um, that we've heard from the IEA and many in the market that I touched on earlier as well. And they sort of preface this by saying, fostering the 
financial conditions for a rapid deployment of clean energy in emerging markets uh, and developing countries, and the creation of new regulatory frameworks that will allow for the mobilization and deployment of private capital at scale, uh, and for that to be deployed at speed, is one of the defining challenges um, of our time. So with that in mind, at COP26, we announced the model law for uh, Institutional Investor Public Partnerships Initiative. Um, this particular initiative is a collaboration between the African Green Infrastructure Investment Bank and our global partner, the CFA Chartered Financial Analysts uh, Group out of New York, their Global Asset Owners Council, uh, in association with global law firm DLA Piper, which as many of you know, were COP26's legal services provider. Uh, the model law um, aims to introduce and enable the use of a newly designed infrastructure uh, procurement uh, regulation and framework directly between governments and global institutional investors and domestic institutional investors uh, to mobilize capital at scale and to be able to deploy that capital at speed within its own legal and regulatory framework for green and net zero infrastructure investment programs and projects, both domestically uh, and across uh, borders. The full model law will be launched at COP27. And I think many of you may have even seen the recent article in the Financial Times. And if you look at the European case, you know, we're talking about seven years to permit uh, and bring a wind project uh, to market when we know we have eight years to deliver some pretty, uh, you know, significant pools of capital uh, to projects that are still under development. So this legal uh, approach and legal framework is designed to assist us be able to mobilize the, the quantums of the capital that we need and create that legal and regulatory architecture so that they can be deployed um, at speed. Third and finally, the MDB uh, de-risking reform agenda. As many of you witnessed, um, the central point echoed loudly at COP26 in Glasgow when institutional investors representing over $150 trillion committed to net zero highlighted that the precondition uh, for their capital to flow to Africa was a significant increase in MDB's de-risking African net zero aligned green infrastructure and NDC related investments. De-risking levels uh, remain much lower than required uh, and are still very low relative to other regions with estimates from the World Bank showing that only 9% of total cumulative global private investment catalyzed by MDB co-financings has been provided to um, uh, Africa. You know, MDBs already have, um, as we know, and I think a number of you are also in the room and we, we love the collaboration, MDBs already have an undertaking and have undertaken under the Hamburg principles to optimize their balance sheets more to crowding uh, private capital in order to scale up uh, blended finance at pace and at the pace that's really required for uh, private finance to grow the total pool of capital for African nationally determined contributions. So to increase MDB's speed, scale and efficiency of mobilizing and deploying uh, uh, this private capital at scale, Asset owners propose one governance and four operational recommendations. This is part of our contribution to the thought leadership going into this, this particular debate. We don't want to go to another COP and be told, you know, this needs to happen. And we haven't really thought about what, you know, our contribution towards helping the MDBs and the MDB shareholders understand perhaps how they can be more effective uh, for us. And then, of course, we take good guidance from them about how we can be more effective for them. So the first recommendation is to, uh, we have the proposal is to update MDB's purpose and governance and governing charter documents to recognize the ongoing climate emergency and the crucial role that MDBs play in taking action to help mitigate and adapt to it. Uh, the second recommendation is for the MDBs to set targets for climate finance mobilization um, expressed as a proportion of beneficiary NDCs. The third uh, recommendation is for MDBs is to scale the investment needed by MDB beneficiaries by prioritizing risk sharing with private finance um, and amend risk appetite frameworks to enable increased structured risk taking as well as capital recycling and velocity uh, to support the move to an original share model as opposed to an originate and hold uh, loan model. Um, fourth uh, recommendation, increase risk related data transparency um, and support risk sharing with private finance uh, and prevent African nations paying an unnecessary premium on financing costs, especially by democratizing and opening up 
access to the likes of the Global Emerging Markets Database, which has all of the historic performance of, 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 of project finance loans, but that information is not currently made available to uh, investors or credit rating agencies. So as a consequence, we tend to overprice in some cases this, this classic uh, you know, information that we always describe as you pay a premium on perceived risk uh, versus actual risk. And MDB is opening up the global emerging markets database uh, will certainly go some way to, to, to reducing that uh, that, that risk premium that, that the continent has to bear. Fifth and finally, um, enhance MDB's structuring capabilities to support a greater mobilization of private finance and streamline processes to expedite approvals uh, over NDC projects and financial products, uh, enabling MDBs to act at scale uh, and pace um, that we really need uh, as the beneficiaries um, and, and, and public owners of, of, of these particular institutions. They are public goods, um, and there's absolutely a, a much more catalytic role they can play in this de-risking uh, space. Um, and, and we look forward to increasing our mandates uh, to be able to deploy more capital um, to support uh, African NDCs and, and climate-related projects. My parting cautionary message to NDC uh, project owners uh, and developers is do not overestimate the availability of and ease of access to public and concessional finance for your NDC projects and do not underestimate the complexity associated with securing private finance and capital for your NDCs. So we look forward to continuing this discussion and finding ways to, to collaborate um, as we transition. Thank you very much.